everybody, and welcome to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland College. Jim, as usual on the show, we want to get right to it. No messing around on this set. We only got a half hour. We got a lot to fit in. So, boy, you guys really smoked Greenville. You made yeah. them feel even greener than they were. 60, 63 to 10. What a blowout. Yeah, it was a... Uh... It was a good game. Long trip, you know, yeah. 70 hours down there. And, it's kind and, of in the St. Louis area, so yeah, our fans about, at home. Yeah, it's about 40, uh, 40 minutes north, a little northeast of, of St. Louis. Okay. So it was a long trip. We left Friday afternoon, got there late Friday night, and you never know how your kids are going to react. Are they going to be a little sluggish? And we stopped and practiced on the road, just got out and walked around, did a couple things. And we came out, you know, in the morning, or the game started at noon because the time changed a little earlier. Right. It was their senior day. You just never know what's going to happen. Our kids came out smoking. Mm -hmm. You know, they came out and we went, so you said we went right at it, got right, got right to it. And the kids played exceptional in the first half, all three phases of the game. We got, we, we caused turnovers on kickoffs. We scored every drive in the first quarter. I think by the time the smoke cleared, it was either 28 or 34 nothing after the first quarter or something such yeah. as that. And, and the rest was, uh, the rest was history, as they say, I guess. But the kids played exceptional in that first half. That's a neat, a neat situation for you because you guys go out 28 nothing at the first quarter. You're able to start even working some of your twos in there right away in the, in the second quarter, right? Right, and, and, and working some kids in and just we tried to. The tough thing is sometimes a situation such as this, when you're playing so well and they're struggling a little bit, you're on the road, you're only taking a certain number of kids. So unlike our home games, we have 85, 86, 87 kids dressed. Here you're only taking 55 mm -hmm. kids or so, or 55 young men. So you're going to play your, your twos somewhere along the line, but you're not going to go to, there are no threes, so you right. only took twos. So now all of a sudden you get a situation where your kids, our twos aren't too bad, mm -hmm. and our, our running backs are, are pretty darn good, and they're getting better, and they're all freshmen. Yep. And we just started rolling in the third quarter, and it really got, started raining hard. It rained all game. Um, second quarter started coming down a little bit, and third and fourth quarter it kind of rained steady. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to grind it out. Well, now we got a bunch of big 300-pound kids pushing around them. <laughs> and our young running backs played well, and, and we just we rolled. You know, it was a great, it was a great, great game. Really, really was. Well, one thing you have to be proud of: the rain was definitely a factor in the game. Yeah. They had six fumbles, and you guys recovered them all. But yeah. you guys really did a good job. You fumbled twice, but you only lost one of them. Yeah, we lost one fumble. Um, we had a fumble snap, but we recovered that. That was in the fourth quarter. Our third quarterback. Mm -hmm. Kenny Grandy had a great game. He's from the St. Louis area, so it was good to let him loose a little bit. And he, uh, hometown he fumbled. Game. Yeah, hometown <laughs> game. He rolled. And he, uh, he fumbled, I think, in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. It was the first time we lost the ball. We threw a pick at the end of the half, which I don't think counts the turnover. It's a Hail Mary. We're just throwing it down there to see if we can make a score or not. I think it was 37 nothing at that time. And we're on our 35 yard line. We just threw one up, you mm -hmm. know, to see if we could make a play or not and they ended up picking it off in the end zone. So really yeah, six to one really in turnovers and in a game like that when you're playing a team that you think you might on paper be better than they have some really special skilled kids, but in theory with our size and our strength, we thought if we played well we'd have a good chance to play you know, mm -hmm. beat them pretty well. And then they start turning the ball over and we're not turning it over at all and we're just grinding out yards on the ground. Well then that game gets kinda I don't say ugly, not ugly in our eyes, but good in, good in our eyes and, and ugly in their eyes. Yeah, well, grounding out is exactly a great word to use. I mean, you guys had uh, 381 yards of rushing offense compared to theirs, 96. But you guys had 588 yards of total offense overall right. and 207 through the air. You guys held them to 262 on the Right, which is, which is really coming here. Anytime you get in that 500 range, you yeah. played exceptional on offense, then you're almost in that 600 range. We had 100, like 120 yards of, of, of rush game called back in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. So that could have been a really, I mean, 600 yards is scary, you know, in a game. I don't care who you're playing. Right. So that's great. And holding them to 262 was good. They got a couple. Their running back's really good. They should, I hate to tell their guys how to coach, but gosh, <laughs> if I had that, I'd be running him about 35 times a game. He's a senior. He's a yeah. freak. He's, he's, he's really a great running back. And they just don't have the, the cast up front, I don't think, to, to use him as well. But he ended up getting 100 yards or something close, yeah. I think. Actually, he had nine, nine rushes for 77 yeah. yards, but he had an 8.6 yards per carry. Yeah. Why wouldn't you give him the ball? Thank you. Know? you. Thank <laughs> goodness he didn't. Thank goodness they kept trying to throw it. That's the other problem. They kept trying to throw it here and there. Well, the clock's not moving. They're throwing in completions. Sure. The clock's not moving. But we did a great job on the ground. It was our best. We played some other team that we you know, beat pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't have as clean a game, I guess you say, or as error-free type of game. There weren't a lot of minus rush plays. Mm -hmm. There weren't a lot of where we were third and 15 and we had to make a play to get a first down. It was just, you know, bam, bam, fullbacks, halfback. And Jeff Tapp really started. The game. Jeff Tapp scored three touchdowns the first 18 minutes of the game, mm -hmm. I think. And after that, it was just 
a grind about we were there were some people getting uh you know punished out, out there in a in a physical sense of the word and playing clean hard football that's what i want those kids to do and they really went at it well generally we recap all the scores but i don't know if we're going to do that today we well, might be here all you know, yeah. next week or something <laughs> but we will mention a few of the scores you already mentioned jeff taff he had a, uh, three touchdowns on the day and, and a couple of them were nice and a 40-yard touchdown yeah pass and you'll see those on highlights in the second part of the show but he played well he didn't catch a ball he caught, oh, no, we, yeah, I think he caught, he might not have caught a ball after the first quarter and a half. Mm -hmm. He might have got all that stuff in a quarter and a half of football. Yep, and he finished with eight yard, or eight catches for 125 yeah, yards. Which happened touchdowns. probably in the first 24 minutes of the 23 minutes of the game. Wow. Which you really think about that, you're like, geez, he could have had a, mm -hmm. and he did. Plus, he had, I'm guessing, 60, 70 yards of punt reach. I mean, he had a great day, mm -hmm. and he only played really two and a half quarters total. He played great. Marcus Denham scored a touch. I mean, I, I, I can kind of recap for you, I think. <laughs> yeah, and Marcus, Den Marcus Denham gained 100 yards on the ground. He only yep. played two and a half quarters. Is that his first 100-yard game? I, I think remember. first or second. Second one, second. First yeah. or second, but he was a, uh, you know, we were talking about that in terms of looking ahead to the end of the season. Mm -hmm. When you start mentioning, well, you get to that all-conference stuff and, and, and so on. He, besides the games that have been close and mm -hmm. competitive, he's rarely played more than a half or two and a half quarters. And he's getting 89 yards, and he only played two and a half quarters. He played the first series of the second half, and that's all. Mm -hmm. So he gained 100 yards in a little over a half. Yeah, and I think I, I got to go back and look at the total stats, but I think he's over 600 yards now for the season, or give or take. Yeah, right give or take a little bit. Maybe. And right you take there. away his uh, first game, Nick Hunter played yep. more. Second game, he didn't play much. Mm -hmm. Oshkosh was really his first game where he plays on six games, regardless of what his average per game is, because that's kind of. But when he's played, mm -hmm. he's a 100-yard rusher for us, right. and we really never put him into the fourth. Aurora played a little bit of the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. The rest of those games, besides the quarter of Wisconsin, he's been out midway through the third quarter. So he's been really pretty good. Pretty That's good nice to see because you've been talking about his steady progression that he's had throughout the entire right. season, and, and you're expecting big things from him throughout the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, and, and we are. I think uh, he's going to be – he keeps working out in, in the weight room, and. You know, does well academically, and he could be a really mm -hmm. special cat. And the great thing about him is that there's two young guys, Marcus Green and Aaron Berry, played really well behind him. Mm -hmm. Marcus had a good number of yards, and, and Aaron Berry is not even on the your style list, but he had a couple of carries at the end, and they're both freshmen. Mm -hmm. We throw halfbacks out there, it goes freshman, freshman, freshman right now. Mm -hmm. Eric Fritz, the senior who has had that knee problem, he scored at the end of the game, which was right. great to see. And But, I mean, those three top halfbacks are freshmen, and all our fullbacks are coming back. I think Travis scored early in the second quarter, first quarter. Travis Jervis had a touchdown. Um, Marcus Denham had at least one. He had two, yeah. He had two. Marcus, mm -hmm. or, uh, Jeff Taft had three. Kenny Grundy had one. Eric Fritz had one. Mm -hmm. And our defense recovered a fumble in the end zone, you know, prior for that eighth or ninth touchdown. <laughs> Just sounds good to say that. Eighth <laughs> touchdown. I think it was eighth touchdown because we missed – Two extra points, I think, when we kicked a field goal or two. And we can't forget, you know, Gerald Starner, as you just mentioned, kicking yes, a field goal. Yeah. Gene Slice get mentioned, of course. Yeah, he you know, like scored a lot of points. He had a field, field goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously extra points, et cetera, throughout the day. Right, so right. Had a nice game overall. Yeah, well, so. I think that Eric Fritz is kind of a similar heart and soul of your team. You mentioned him. You got him in. got him a touchdown. Why don't you tell us a little about his background? The, the amazing thing about that play was, or about that, his whole deal was, he came in, it was him, Nick Hunter, was a junior. Eric Fritz was a senior who was happy because when he played high school here in Howard's Grove, mm -hmm. they were a run-oriented team, and it was just kind of north-south. He's not a burner. Mm -hmm. He's a physical kid. He's, he's tough. He's a great attitude kid. He's, he's what you want in a football player. All of a sudden, he hurts his knee in our first in our squad scrimmage on a Sunday, and I thought it was just a – he limped off. I'm like, oh, that's probably just a, hopefully just a sprain or a right. stretch or whatever. All of a sudden, it's ACL done. Well, he says – you know, for any lack of better trade, he says, screw it. I'm not going to lose this season. He gets a brace. He waits a couple weeks. He puts a brace on. He has no ACL. Mm -hmm. This young man is playing football with his knee. One of his knees has no, really no ACL left. It's, it's wasted. Mm -hmm. And he's playing, and he's on special teams for us now. He's on kickoff coverage, getting down there making plays. Hurt his knee against the Cordial Illinois again. Got a couple of carries, though. Hurt his knee again on kickoff. Thought he was, you know, Doug didn't play last week. And all of a sudden went back this week to get that thing rehabbed it, went back out there, and he knows the situation. Now he knows right. he, he's camping around, but he's playing so hard. He still has a great job on kickoff team. Well, in that game, it's the fourth quarter, and I played the three young guys, and Eric, of course, Travis on special teams. I said, Eric, you know, let's go. He gets in there, first play is in there, 20-yard 20 20, 20 yard run touchdown. <laughs> and he comes off, and here's a young man who knows if he was healthy, mm -hmm. he'd be playing. I mean, he'd be, he'd be 
playing a lot. He comes up not unhappy because he only got one carry. He comes and hugs me. Thanks, Coach. Thanks so much for that. Just thanks, thanks so much for giving me in. And that's why I almost started crying thinking, there's a kid who really should, could be playing a ton more mm -hmm. if he was healthy. Mm -hmm. And he's just happy that he got that carry. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, holy crap. That's what you want your team to get to where those kids don't care who plays as long as they're winning, as long as they're scoring, as long as we're playing well. He's happy, and of course he's frustrated because he can't, because sure. he has no ACL. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be <laughs> most guys would be in surgery two months ago. And you're right, he's hard. I told him, I said, if he ever wanted to come back and coach, if he stays in this area and works mm -hmm. after he graduates, I said, he's, he's got a job with me. Yeah. He's got a job yeah. right now. He, he can go, and we have enough coaches. We can move people around. He'd be coached with us automatically. Well, it's kind of like what I heard this weekend. Though, I was watching the Michigan State-Michigan game and because uh, I couldn't make it down to St. Louis. But anyways. Because you're uh, you're, you didn't want to. <laughs> if the I, other guy was here, you probably would have. Huh? See, we're not tight enough. Commitments. We're not tight <laughs> enough yet. <laughs> All right. The mic's coming off. <laughs> anyways, as the John L. Smith, he's talking about, hey, there's no, you know, the old, there's no I in team. They, they need right. an unselfish attitude. I know last year at Michigan State, they had pictures of, you know, Charlie Rogers or whatever his name is, a great wide right receiver. Right. And they're and smoker, their quarterback. Right, you know. We took that off and just said we're going to make generic pictures and stuff like that. And I think that's what we're seeing with your team, yeah. an unselfish attitude. They're not right. worried about who's getting the ball. And I think no. that's reflective in the record. Now all of a sudden that they're they're probably going to finish 8-2, and two, the best record since 1997. Well, you can't the go, you can't there, go so. there, Wes. <laughs> we're 7-2 and two right now, I'll give you that. Right. At least we know, what we know exactly where we're at. And I right. think that's because that they don't care who gets the ball. They're just worried about you know taking care of business, the process. You know, hey, we're going to work as hard as we can. We'll let the things work themselves out. We'll take let the wins and losses. But I'm not going to worry about, hey, I scored three touchdowns no, today or right. I caught ten passes. I think something. what happened last year, I think the biggest, I know we got to go to break here soon. Yeah. I think the big thing was the biggest position that had the most, would have had the most trouble with wide receiver. Because yep. you come from an offense, it's a five wide. Here's guys that are catching. Now, the funny thing is when this whole thing sh gets done, <laughs> there's a good chance we'll have more passing yards than they did last year. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Or yeah, somewhere. Amazing. And potentially just score different. But they're not going to be the little rinky-dink receivers catching 40 balls for five yards of catch right, right. and we throw we you know we throw it yeah. and I think Jeff Taffer now has 44 catches mm -hmm. and uh, has a ton of yards Sean Barron has I don't know that 30 35 range but he has a ton of yards. maybe 30 yards. he has a ton of well he had a nice game too four catches or yeah. 40 yards the other day. right that, and he had you know after coming off his 170 yard game last week so mm -hmm. it's gonna be neat to see we'll have more touchdown passes probably mm -hmm. more yards throwing but just those kids had those kids had to bite a little bit and say now is winning more important, or mm -hmm. at least buying it, because they didn't know if they were going to win when I came in, is buying into a new system more important, mm -hmm. or is me, myself, getting 40 right. catches more important? Yeah. I know we got to go to break. Yeah, we gotta get the signs, brother. we got to go. All right, all right. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back with more on the Lakeland Locker Room. I love the challenge of computers. Not that I have much time with these little guys and my job, but when my wife went back to school, I thought, why can't I? Certain things in life demand my attention, but a new career in computer science deserves my attention. An evening class at Lakeland doesn't tie my life in knots, thanks to a flexible, easy-to-manage schedule that allows me to balance work, school, and the twins. Evening classes that meet once a week, that's the easy part. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm sitting at a <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland. Jim, we were just talking about your great start here, 7-2, mm -hmm. first chance to guys, uh, first first opportunity now to finish with the, the best record since 1997. Yeah. So it's been quite a span here for six or six years or so. Yeah. Uh, but one thing we were just talking about at break here, especially, and you had mentioned about Brent Lupke, uh. is uh, the ability for, for you guys to throw downfield. We don't have the short five-yard quick hits right. anymore. And it's, it's kind of fun to watch because we haven't seen it in the past. You know, Lupke never threw the ball downfield. You no. guys might actually end up with more yards on less attempts. Right. But, you know, this kid, here's a kid who has a cannon of a, an arm, but we never got to see it. And right. sometimes even without the best technique, he, he throws the ball. It's so nice and easy and fluid. Right. And he throws the ball 40, 50 yards in the air. Yeah, he, and we talked about this as, um, with me and him and the other quarterbacks. He was um, – he wasn't a great technique kid because mm -hmm. in, in what they played in before offense, it was more get the ball out of your hands as quickly as possible. It was a lot of timing stuff, mm -hmm. and the coaches didn't care what they looked like, just get the ball out. A lot of quarterbacks don't have great technique, 
you see them in the NFL, you see them in college, but they get the ball to the right people quickly and so on. So last year was getting the ball to those guys quickly and trying to make them break tackles. Or we're more of a vertical pushing mm -hmm. type passing attack. And, and we really worked hard with Brent. And I, I can say myself just because I coach quarterbacks. Sure. And I wear where his feet get spread out sometimes and he overstrides. And that's where he gets a little messed up and we were really hard with his feet and keeping his elbow up and and sometimes he dropped down he's kind of a gunslinger when i got it kind of a sidearm kid and he's too big to do that he's six four and when you start dropping down sidearm you become six foot mm -hmm. and you want to be taller when you're a quarterback so he's really if you look at a kid and you put his tape on even from our game one mm -hmm. to right now it's like night and day in terms of technique and mm -hmm. so because i've always been a competitor and a gamer and a hard-nosed kid but he's just having fun i think because i used to we're throwing more vertical shots, mm -hmm. and, and what helps that is you get a running game. Mm -hmm. You get a running game, you get people into the box, and all of a sudden you have Sean Barron, Jeff Tapp, James Hayes, and Courtney Gatlin. You have a good crew of receivers, and, and I think, like you and me talked about before, they had to buy into the philosophy of, mm -hmm. and they did when I took this job. A lot of them said, hey, I, I go, now receivers, realize, if I get this job, we're, we're not going to throw the ball 82 times a game. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to run the ball, we're going to play action, we're still going to throw it, but and just trust me, you're not going to get as many catches, but you'll get as many yards in this system if you just buy into And what's happened now, these guys become our best blockers right now are Jeff Taft and Sean Barron, the two receivers who have the most yards and most catches. So they've totally bought into this. They said, hey, I'm going to block. And they love when we start grinding it out, you know, and our big kids get physical and so on. So, so you're right, though. It's kind of a, the kids have bought into it. And you watch highlights. It's Sean Barron one day, Jeff Tapp the, the other, Marcus Denham, Brent Lupke, you know, tight ends catching the ball, Jed and those guys, Travis Jervis. And you don't know who's going to get that. On defense, half the time you have no clue who's making the play just because it's 11 guys running around real fast. Yeah, but a perfect <laughs> example this weekend, Sam Sheringer led your team with only seven tackles. Yeah, and they were all over. And, and there was so many people all over the ball. They, Like you said, in, in their play-by-play, -play, we score a touchdown on defense. Mm -hmm. And it says by team. Yeah, cause there's like six guys on the ball, and no, no, that happened. And we recovered fumble. I don't think they even know who recovered fumble, but right. they have definitely bought into it. And there is not, we don't have the one. Now, we're just pretty good. I mean, we have some kids that are pretty good. And we're not, I'm not naive in that fact. Right. And that in this league right now, you look at it, you know, the two teams that are playing the best is Concordia and ourselves. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, unlike basketball and baseball, you don't get that home and home game unless yeah. let this thing roll again. But just the way we've been playing, they've been playing. You know, those kids that bought in, well, we, it does work. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever the system is, it works. We believe in it, mm -hmm. and we're going to play hard because the results have been, you know, success. One quadruple overtime, quadruple overtime loss, and, and an Oshkosh game, or uh, Wisconsin game in Cordy where we just turned the ball over too much. Played well, just, you can't just turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go ahead and take a look yep. at some of the highlights. We'll see an example of Brett. See a little rain, a little dreary Greenville down there. <laughs> this is a first drive, Marcus Denham. Up the middle for a touchdown, about 10 yards on. When you watch the big boys up front, that's what you saw all day. Just a, a wall of bodies. And that's great. This is Travis Jervis scoring the second touchdown, or the first. They confuse in those two. Here's Jeff Tapp. We don't even call this play. We just throw an uncovered receiver, and Jeff breaks it for 50 with Sean and James doing a great job blocking. That's not a called play. That's just an audible line of scrimmage. Here around the seven yard line, same thing. They don't, they don't get tight enough to Jeff. It's so like, if you're not going to get tight enough to Jeff, we're going to throw him the ball. Touchdown Barry Sanders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Four man Barry out there, wide receiver. Here, we, we mix up our kickoff. Sometimes we kick it deep. Here, we just pooch kick it just so they have pretty good returners. Well, this guy has trouble catching it because rainy and windy out. We get it back, and you see there's eight white jerseys on there, and they're fighting in there now. It's, it's uh, <laughs> get the rock out. The scrum. Exactly. <laughs> our, our, our kickoff team is doing a really great job. They, they joke around, call themselves a pain train, like the Reebok commercial with the office manager. And here's fourth and 15, Webb, you like this one. Fourth and 15, we never punt anyway. Brent, up, bold, up, no, up <laughs> no stride. Jeff Tapp, middle of the field, took it open, touchdown. He got his feet, he had the guys around his feet. Here's Kenny Grundy in the flat, St. Louis boy, making a play, and that's great because Greenville's right by, and he's running people over and trucking people. And he gained like 80 yards rushing or 75 yards rushing and did a great job. And defensively, we just made plays all day. All day. There's a sack by, I mean, you name them, it's our front four. Uh, who got that sack? Offensively, again, here's James Hayes catching a slant, slant pass. End of the half, actually got us in position to chuck one in the end zone. Here's defense. Here's Vidge, who's just play, he's played outstanding all year. Vidge is just around the ball. Here's the interception off a tip pass. Had to start the second half, which got us momentum. 
to finish this game off. Here's Sean Barron. Oh, I missed that one. That's, I'm sorry. That's Marcus Denham Green, 14 yards on the, on the run up the middle again with our big boys just creating havoc up front. They just played great. Our old line played great. Here's a sack. They're trying to throw up their own inch line. Here's the uh, touchdown by committee. <laughs> okay. They couldn't tell who got it, but it was eight guys on top of the ball. And, and unfortunately, you see our guy, Leonard Shane. Shane kind of got dinged a little bit, but he's okay. So don't think anything happened poorly. I mean, he's okay. Here's fourth down for Greenville somewhere in the fourth quarter. They catch it. We strip it. Fumble. Sky Ring picks up the, uh, the fumble. And here's a screen pass. They try to run, and there's just a, a sieve out there. Our defense does a great job with the sack. And it's just, it was great. Like I said, the funnest thing I told our old line, I go, I told our old line and, our, and, our, and um, Coach Consell, our old line coach, I said, the funnest thing about this game, offensively wise, was we were just, there was just a wall of white jerseys, and our running backs were just gashing. And, and that's really fun to watch because those kids, they were blitzing. I mean, Greenville is blitzing and bringing heat. And you watch them against every other team, and they cause some trouble. Mm -hmm. And we just were, were waxing people and doing a great job. Defense, we got the ball back so fast so many times. Because I think it was 37-7 halftime. And I told our ones, I go, man, we need to get the ball back immediately, defensively. Offense, we need to get the ball score. It's out of reach probably at 37-7. I'm always one of those guys, if you get into the 40s, show's kind of over. Mm -hmm. If we get in there, the ones are done after that series, they score. We make it 44-7, and, and the rest is, you know, six, whatever the game, 63. What was it, 63-10? 63-10, yeah, 63-10. Blah, city. But, you know, one thing we always talk about, and we've kind of recapped some of these. We always recap the stats just so people at home right. have a good idea. We mentioned your total offensive uh, yards, 588, 381 yards rushing, 207 passing. Uh, 18 of 27 for your quarterbacks. Right. One couple stats that really stand out to your time of possession: 37, 11 to 22, 49. Right. Uh, you guys really dominated yeah. there. 31 first downs, which I believe is a season high. Um, That's and a also, lot of first downs. <laughs> sure is, I know. <laughs> and of course, they only had 13, which even right. makes it better. And the one thing that uh, you guys had is only two punts, which is good. But yes. probably the only yeah, probably the only negative stat I see over here is, is a 15 penalties. Is that right? 15 penalties. Let me see that. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's pretty dang high. We are. <laughs> you know what's so sad? When I came here, and I, you know what? And that number probably is correct. I hate to say that. When I got here, I said <laughs> um, I came from disciplined people, and and there's a fine line. There's certain types of penalties you you can't live with. You know the cheap shots, the right. personal fouls, and so on. Um, we occasionally get a, an offsides penalty that we just, are, we'll, we'll be an aggressive. Yeah, you know? yeah, but then offensively we'll do, we'll miss a snap count. Mm -hmm. Those you shouldn't, those we have to correct, and mm -hmm. we, we get better all of a sudden. We'll do something mm -hmm. not very smart, and, and we'll correct those. That's coaching. That's us. We got to do a better job with that. But then these penalties, we had one or two face masks. We weren't. I mean, they just they reached instead of move their feet. Um, we had a celebration penalty, which wasn't anything again. He called it. I talked to him. He wasn't bad. That kid was just excited and turned to our kids and made a gesture like, you know, hey, great job. And he thought he just didn't want the game to get out of hand. I'm like, fella, our kids don't taunt. We're not a taunt. We don't do that. So those penalties, but you're right. We laugh. We call ourselves the Oakland Raiders of the 80s. You know, 15 penalty. And here's a weird part. You look at, even on that Milliken, we're always first or second in the league, and we're always the best, how do you say this? The best teams sometimes have the most penalty yards. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's that like you said, it's that uh, you're pushing this line of aggressiveness mm -hmm. and and sometimes you tow it too much and you go over it and now you can't. The holding, if it's a stupid holding call and you're reaching, and some of them you gotta correct those coding. We have to, that's us. Offsides, I'm more mad at myself because offense, if we jump offside, then that's we're not disciplined enough. Mm -hmm. but those other ones are just we're aggressive. You know, and so on. But we got, we can't. <laughs> you know, they call, they called back 100. They, like I said before, they, there was 120 yards of rush game called back yep. on two penalties. They called two holding calls. One we think was the other one. Our kid got tackled. Our fullback, we we play faked. Mm -hmm. He got tackled. They call holding call. So I think sometimes the games start getting a little crazy. Yeah. The refs start trying to keep the game sure. in, in charge. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. I don't know if that, it's not something you put on your resume when you're looking well, I mean, for the, the big thing there is, of course, just, you know, in a game like this, it won't hurt you. We just right. don't want it to happen in the wrong no. game. But no. either way, when you look down the stat sheet and, and you, you guys are only one category is the only thing in the whole sheet that you guys lost in. That's, that's impressive. You guys know yeah. you pretty much dominated right. that game. And, we, and you're right. And that, that is the biggest thing is turnover margin. Yep. When it's 6-2 to two and really 6-1 to one with the Hail Mary, I mean, that's, you're plus four. Oh, yeah. And we're top. I don't, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I think we are now top. 20 in the country, sure. or top 15 or 20 in the country in um, 
plus and turnover margin. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those top 15 teams, they're probably playing pretty well, you mm -hmm. know, just such as we are. And, mm -hmm. and we are playing pretty well. The great thing is that after the Concordia Wisconsin loss, the kids just kind of picked it up. And since then, it's been, um, you know, 49 nothing, 34 10. 63 10 mm -hmm. and hopefully we can end it well at benedictine which is another road game which is a kind of a not an overnighter so you gotta leave really early and it's right. gonna be one of those another but our kids just you watch our kids they have fun they know i'm kind of a psycho in terms of it's raining out there and i'm yelling yeah, i let it rain because <laughs> i want our kids to realize it doesn't matter what happens to us mm -hmm. rains no i'm not gonna get upset if it rains mm -hmm. people think hey you're a quote-unquote offensive guy you won't nah, who care it rains no you got to play in it mm -hmm. so like those guys i have fun the kids buy into and i want to make sure they have fun football the hard sport like any sport isn't you want to have fun you don't want them to be out there going oh this is i don't want to be it's not a job it's a game mm -hmm. so the kids are fun and it's fun and i look at i told the kids when we got your last concordia wisconsin we still if concordia wisconsin slips this weekend from murray they probably won't but if they do and we win we tie for the conference. We won't go to the playoffs, but we tie for the conference, mm -hmm. which is an outstanding, um, an outstanding year. And if we get to eight and two, well, you know what? I look back at those two games, and I'll never look back and say, should have, could have. No, we we could have, mm -hmm. but we didn't at that at that moment. They beat us, and but it was a great, both great games. And, and you gotta go. You gotta go from there. Well, you got about a minute. We have uh, less than two left in the show. Of course, yeah. I got to recap some okay. stuff. What do you think about Benedictine? What's going to happen? Of course, this game is down in Lyle. It's our last game. It's senior day for them. You know, okay. hopefully we play as well like we did at Greenville senior day and <laughs> ruin their senior day. Um, last game is always emotional in terms of how are your kids going to react when those kids know mm -hmm. those seniors, 14 seniors we have. So you got to let that go. And I always tell them it ain't. It's not. It's not your last game until the game's over. Play the game. Any mm -hmm. game could be your last game in case of injury or whatever. I think we're going to come out and play really well. I think our kids are so in tune to what we want to do and what they're at. They see how good we can be. Mm -hmm. They're starting to really feel like, oh, we're great. At this moment, there's not many teams in this country that I fear at our level to say, I'd be afraid to go play or fear. But let's, let's, right. let's trap it up and go and see what happens. So we'll say, I know we're going to go, but just remember next week, where are we at, Webb? Why Illinois? Yes, it's your hometown. <laughs> and then after the hometown, hopefully with a victory, where step are we Monday? Step number 10. Yep, step 10, and where, where are we at Monday? Of course, we're at Lakeland College. We're going to talk about that. You betcha. Here, so. All right. Well, Jim, thanks again for thanks, joining man. us today. We've got about 30 seconds to recap here. Again, the Muskies pound Greenville, 63-10, move the record to 7-2. They're chasing the best record since 1997 when the Muskies finished 10-0. and The Muskies are predicted to finish 8-2. and uh, Of course, Z doesn't like to hear that, but they should be 8-2 after next week. Uh, the women's soccer team, of course, won the conference title for the second straight uh, year in a row. They have an a automatic bid, or excuse me, a, a, an automatic buy right now, and they're waiting to see who they're going to play in the final four of the conference tournament shoot for the automatic bid. The men's team won their first round game. They finished third in conference, but they beat Maranatha 4-0 in the first game. They're going to play, I believe, on Wednesday now for their uh, second game in the semifinals and see what happens there. They have a good chance of winning as well. Um, women's volleyball team won the conference title for the third straight year. They great finished job. undefeated 12-0. Coach Shriver doing great a great job. job. Coach Cole, I should have mentioned, for the soccer team is doing a yeah. fine job as yeah. well, um, of course. But the big news is, of course, next Monday we're going to be shooting this show from Lakeland College. It's going to be a, quite a madhouse, I believe. Of course, we're going to be shooting it from the Lakeland College campus. Campus pub should be lots of fun. Drink so. prices, happy hour. That's right. Show it could be up. Crazy. Look out. <laughs> so. But again, thanks for joining us. The Muskies win 63-10. We'll see you next week from Lakeland College. And thanks for joining us again on the Lakeland Locker Room.